Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dishan Tang from UC Berkeley. I'd like to share our experience of building Modern, a parallel data frame system. I will focus on two techniques, flexible rule-based decomposition and metadata independence. Data frame is an intuitive data model for data scientists, where the data is organized in a tabular layout and ordered across rows and columns. It includes row and column labels to identify a cell and does not require a predefined schema. This way, a data scientist can quickly explore their data even when the schema is not determined. In addition, a column of uh, each column can host data with mixed types, which is a critical feature for the data scientist to quickly analyze the dirty data set. Data frames becomes popular due to a data frame tool, Pandas. It provides a rich set of functions tailored for data scientists across data loading, cleaning, and analysis. It can also be integrated with existing tools such as Jupyter Notebook, where a data scientist can inspect the intermediate uh, results and incrementally build their program. People love Pandas. Its daily downloads is more than 3 million. According to a survey from Stack Overflow, Pandas is used by over a quarter of the surveyed developers. But Pandas cannot scale. It runs on a single thread, and uh, the, the supported dataset size is limited to the memory capacity of a single machine. In face of a large dataset, many organizations use Pandas like this. A data scientist will take a sample data from the full dataset and analyze locally using Pandas. When they have finally built this Pandas program, they will deliver it to a data engineer to run it on a full dataset. This data engineer will rewrite the program into the new one that can run on Spark or Ray. And uh, with the results returned, the data scientist may rewrite the program again. This back and forth program rewriting can significantly consume humans' time. So the question is, can we empower data scientists to directly analyze big data while they can still use their beloved tools without worrying about scalability issue? Modern addresses this gap. With only one line of change, the end users can use Pandas API to analyze the big data which are executed on distributed data processing frameworks. Its daily downloads is more than 7,000 and has more than has over 7,000 GitHub stores. The key idea of Modern is to map all of the rich uh, functions of Pandas into 15 cooperators and run the cooperators efficiently in parallel. In this talk, I will focus on two techniques in modern, rule-based decomposition and metadata independence. Let me start with the first one, which is for uh, which is to enable efficient parallel execution for the core operators. We have three types of core operators: map to style, relational, and metadata related. For example, this infer type operator will infer the type of a column that has mixed types of data. One unique property of these operators is that many of them will apply along rows, columns, and cells, which is different from relational operators uh, that only apply to rows or columns. For example, this filter operator will drop rows or columns based on a predicate. Another property is all of the operators need to maintain a specific order for the output data frame to maintain the same semantics as pandas. For instance, this filter operator, if we use it to drop rows based on predicate, the output data frame should inherit the order of the input one. The question is how to efficiently run the cooperators in parallel when we have flexible ways of applying them and need to maintain orders. The solution is to our solution is to develop order-preserving and flexible decomposition rules. To do this, we'll first define the output orders for core operators. 
Some of them will inherit order from the input data frames, and some of them are data or a parameter dependent. In this talk, I will focus on the long blocking, of, long blocking operators that inherit orders from one input data frame. Let's first revisit how databases parallelize long blocking operators. It takes uh, an order set of tuples and input and partition it by road without considering orders. After we apply each uh, operator to each partition, a union function is adopted to union the results. This approach does not apply to data frame systems because we need to consider orders and have flexible ways of applying the uh, operators. Therefore, we propose order preserving row based decomposition. Let me start with the row wise decomposition and use the map operator as an example. It applies a UDF to each row, column, or cell and computes a new row, column, or cell. To inherit, the, uh, to inherit order of the input data frame, we need to partition the input data frame by order. When we computed the result, we have another concatenate operator that will um, concat all of the results by order. One application of the row-wise computation is to add a derived column that sums the values in previous columns. Symmetrically, we can do column-wise decomposition. One application here is to fill the log values of each column based on UDF. Similarly, we can do cell-wise decomposition, where the data frame is partitioned into cells in order, and after the computation, we will concat the computed results in order too. One application is to reformat each value of in the state frame based on a regular expression. Now we have the decomposition rules. The next question is how to apply them. Let me start with a single operator. Here, the date frame is pre-partitioned into blocks. Based on the decomposition rules, we will um, assemble the blocks into rows, columns, or larger blocks of cells. How about multiple operators? One straightforward method is to apply the decomposition rule to each operator separately and decide pipelining or exchange data between two operators, where the data exchange is much more costly due to the communication cost. The decision is based on the decomposition hierarchy, where the parent decomposition is much more general than the child. Specifically, we will use a uh, data pipelining if the decomposition rule is followed by the same or a more general one. Otherwise, we, can use, we will use data exchange. For example, if the row-wise decomposition is followed by a cell-wise, we can pipeline the data, but not the other way around. Actually, we can do better to reduce the data exchange cost. The idea is, is to rewrite the decomposition rules. Specifically, we can rewrite a decomposition rule to its descendant um, because the former one is more general. For example, we can rewrite the cell-wise decomposition to row-wise. We find this rewrite rule can enable two optimizations. The first is called bigger data pipelining. It will rewrite a decomposition rule to its descendant if it sits between two such descendants. For example, here we have a cell-wise decomposition sits between two row-wise. Based on our previous rules, we need to pipeline the data for the first two and exchange the data for the latter two. If we rewrite the cell-wise decomposition to a row-wise, we can pipeline the data for all three operators because they are all row-wise decompositions. Another optimization is to rewrite the decomposition rule to its descendant if it sits between two different descendants. For example, this, in this case, a cell-wise decomposition sits between a row-wise and column-wise. If we do the rewriting, we essentially uh, swap the data exchange and the data pipelining phases and such that we can select the one with a lower cost. We have a more complicated decomposition hierarchy in the paper. Please find the details in the paper. 
Those are supported uh, are used to support his drawing and other operators. In addition to the decomposition rules, we also consider how to efficiently efficiently manage metadata. Metadata is there is a rich metadata in data frame, including type information per column, the row column labels, and the ordering information. But maintaining metadata is costly. Consider this example of maintaining the type information. Here, the data frame has three columns, uh, three integer columns. After we have converted the column C of each row into a string, we need to scan the row, the column of each. Um, we need to scan each column to find the new uh, type information. This type inference process is time consuming, can significantly increase the execution time. We introduced the technique in metadata independence. Its idea is to logically maintain the metadata and decouple it from its physical representation. This way, we can decide when this metadata is computed. In our current design, we compute the metadata when necessary. For example, we can skip the type inference after operator one because operator two does not need this type information. The next question is how do we know the metadata is required? We formally define it on the core operators. For example, this table summarizes when the type, the type information is required for each core operator and how they are um, modified across the core operators. In the paper, we include a type system in modern and also the lazy computation for other metadata. Please find the details in the paper. Let's look at the experiments. Here we test three modern variants. Modern P, which applies to composition rules without the lazy type inference and the optimization of rewriting decomposition rules. Modern PT, the second variant, will add the type inference, and the third one will further add the rewriting optimization. We test two notebooks and datasets from Kaggle and run the experiments on a machine from AWS. We find that modern significantly reduces the execution time compared to pandas. The lazy type inference reduces the execution time by up to 39 seconds, and the rewriting optimization further accelerates modern by up to 35 seconds. We also compare modern with uh, other data frame systems, data frame uh, DeskDF and Coalus. DeskDF runs on Desk and uh, Coalus runs on Spark. We test three pandas functions. Read CSV, which loads a CSV file into data frame. Fill on A is to fill the log value along rows using a UDF. And this group by dot count is to group the data frame and the count, uh, compute the count for each group. We find that with the number of cores increasing, modern can, the execution time of modern significantly reduces and also, modern has a smaller or similar execution time compared to other baselines. For example, here, modern can reduce execution time of, uh, of desk DF by up to uh, 44%. This is due to our efficient metadata management. To conclude, modern empowers data scientists to directly analyze big data at scale. We introduce two key techniques rule-based decomposition for efficient parallel execution, and metadata independence for efficient metadata management. Please check out Bolin here. With that, I'd like to take any questions.